Hey guys, this is Vicki with Southern Cross Recreation. I found this adorable birdhouse at Hobby Lobby. Of course, it was like 40, maybe even 50% off. I'm not really sure. But let me just tell you, it's great that it has a clean out because, you know, you're going to have to clean it out if you use this out in the yard. But I will tell you and forewarn you, this is made out of pine. It has a hole in the top. The water is going to go through the roof of that birdhouse and rot the bottom of it out. So this is not something that I would buy to put out in my yard, but we are going to transform it into a really pretty home decor piece. And you can use it on your front porch if it's covered or screen room or something like that, or even in your home. Okay, so this, what I wanted to do is we're going to do a technique on this. So I needed to rough it up a little bit. So I took my hand sander and I just kind of went all over the piece. And then what I did is I took some Waverly um, chalk paste in plaster. And then I, I added a little bit of water to it to kind of get it a, a thinner mixture. And then we're going to thicken it up. We are going to add baking soda to it. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. And we are going to make a really pretty... Um, just textured piece and you're it, it just it just came out so super pretty okay so you're going to take the baking soda and I always get this question asked like what part to what part I don't normally do that because I'm adding water to this paint it would be easier to tell you that if it was just the baking soda and the paint but it is not so basically what I do is I thin my paint as you've seen and then I drag the baking soda over into my paint. Now you'll notice here in a minute that I stop because my mixture was not, see how it dripped right there, it's not, that's not a good sign. So you need to mix more baking soda in it and get it thick to where it's almost, it's easily spreadable but it's not dripping so it's almost um it's kind of like a thicker like if you bake it's kind of like how you get your cookie dough kind of thicker and not runny but not too thick you know that kind of texture um so i really don't know what part to part so you just kind of have to look at it and then once you get it on here and of course i had to add more uh, paint you're just going to have to play with the texture and get the texture mixture the way that you want it and it's easy for you to you know personally to work with so what I did is um you know I just continue to have it y'all look I'm going to slow down the video here in just a minute but look at the texture that this is creating on here it is so pretty um, I love this technique now if you're going to put this outside you know under I mean, obviously you can't put it in the weather but you could put it on a screen porch you can put a covered porch um you could put it in the sunroom, you know, or even, you know, home decor, like in, inside your home, if you're doing like a, you know, spring or, you know, kind of um, summer theme. And, um, but you, you need to kind of do a matte Mod Podge um, spray on it, sealer on it, or any, really any kind of sealer that you can get at Lowe's or anything like that. Just make sure that it's, you know, a matte finish because you don't want to take away and make this shiny. So you want to make sure you do a matte finish and just lightly spray it all. But this actually, because it's baking soda, it actually hardens. So it, I, I have done this on numerous projects. I've done it on pumpkins. I've done it um, just a lot of different things. And I've never had a problem with it um, running or, or, you know, dripping or coming off or anything like that. Now, obviously, you're not going to, you know, want to take anything sharp to it, but um, the texture is just, I absolutely love this, this technique. So, it's baking soda, whatever paint color you want to use, and then, obviously, uh, thin your paint out before you um, apply the baking soda. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to slow this down here in just a minute, and then you'll see, you can kind of see it right there, but the texture is just so pretty. I just, I love how these come out with um, the baking soda. Now you see how it's dripping down the roof right there. That was where I first started and it was a little bit um, thin. So you want to see how it's not dripping anywhere. You just kind of make it to where it's not runny, but it's not too thick that you can't spread. If that, hopefully that makes sense to you. 
Okay, and then you're going to continue to go the entire piece. Now, because I want this on my front porch, I do not want wasp or anything like that to get into the birdhouse. So we're going to also add, you know, it's all in the details. I tell you guys that pretty much in every video. Um, so we're going to do some other things to this to make sure that I'm not, you know, creating a home for a wasp nest. Um, that would not be good. Okay. <clears throat> And again, you can use this totally like you buy it from the store. I'm not trying to knock, you know, this birdhouse from Hobby Lobby, but um, I will tell you this probably will last you one season, you know, and it'll probably, that pine, uh, that inside board will um, start rotting just because of this hole right here that you see. Okay, so we're going to take our wire clippers and we're going to cut this wire. I know you guys are going to cringe, but I did take my scissors and I ended up finished cutting it because I just, my wire cutters were not doing it. So we took that out because obviously I'm not going to hang it for a bird um, birdhouse, but look at the texture, y'all. Now I did let this dry overnight. Um, you do need to let it dry overnight before you start, you know, doing anything to it. But y'all, I've got to share these. Look how pretty. I got this whole entire box at Goodwill for $3.99 and it's all, the whole box was full of these little knobs. Are they not so cute? So we are going to use one on this uh, particular piece. Now I cannot, I, I can't get my hand in there. I did try, but you, you, we're not going to use the, the nut and bolt. This right here are lace curtains that I also got at um, Goodwill. Make sure you buy these lace curtains. When you guys see these, make sure because you can craft with them and they're a great buy. Okay, <clears throat> now I don't want my I don't want the wasp in there like I said, so I needed something to cover up these holes, so that way. One, I wouldn't get a bird nest in there, um, or my main concern was I did not want to get any kind of wasp or bugs or dirt, dirt daubers or anything like that inside my bird nest or birdhouse. So I took these lace curtains and I took some um, fabric bonder and then I took a little bit of hot glue. I didn't show the hot glue um, in the video, but I took a little bit of hot glue. Now this, that top one, I, I'll just tell you it's a pain. Um, your, your hand does not want to fit up in there, but these two lower ones are pretty easy to get, um, get glued in. And that will just, you know, hopefully prevent any kind of wasp or bird, do you know, uh, not bird dauber, <laughs> um, dirt dauber or, you know, a bird actually trying to build a nest in here. And so that's literally all I did is just use some fabric bonder and some hot glue and just hot glued it in there um, just to prevent anything like that from getting in there. But like I said, make sure anytime you go to Goodwill or yard sale or something like that and you see lace curtains, always get them and, you know, obviously you can wash them and um, use them for, you know, your craft stash because I, I use this lace like all the time. Okay. <clears throat> like I said, that top one is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit difficult. It just, it kind of wanted to bunch up on me and it was just giving me a hard time. So, okay. So now we're going to go ahead and glue our piece in and literally I'm just hot gluing this right into place. Now, obviously I'm not going to hang it from that. So you could use E6000 in hot glue. Um, but if you're not, if it's just sitting on a table or something like that, bookshelf, whatever, obviously you don't have to do that. Okay, all about the details, I tell you that <clears throat> over and over. So we're going to take some time. Now I had an afterthought of where I was going to put my pick. So I went ahead and wrapped all three of my little um, perch. But the right one, I really didn't have to do, but I did it anyway because it was where I'm putting the um, pick was kind of an afterthought. So I know I'll get that question, well, why did you waste the time to put the twine on there? That's why, because I didn't really have an idea of exactly how I was going to put the pick on there. And so because of that, I went ahead and wrapped all three of the perches. And then, you know, my barbecue skewers, I use them all the time for saving my fingers. This is the one that you're actually not going to see, um, but it's okay. I mean, it's no big deal. 
and I went ahead and, and wrapped it, like I said. I just didn't know where the pick was going to fall. So <clears throat> I do want to take just a minute to thank you for being on my page. Thank you so much for passing all my posts down the road, which means sharing them. Um, that just means so much to a creator because getting our stuff seen is just one of the things. And Facebook is, you know, a lot of times kind of wonky because, you know, they don't show it to you know all the followers and so you don't get, and that's another reason I do the reels. Um, some people wonder, like, why you just did a video? Why are you now posting a reel about the same project? It's because the reels will get seen by different people where they show the, the post to, you know, some, you know, the, um, the video to others. It's, it's just the way Facebook works. And so that's kind of how, why, you know, why I do that. Okay. This pick right here, um, came in a, and that was another hint I wanted to tell you guys, um, just another tip actually, is when you go to Goodwill, look at all of the faux flower arrangements they have there. You may totally hate the flower arrangement, which most of the time they're, they're crunch, they're squish, they're whatever. Um, but look at the flowers and see whether or not they're good quality flowers. Because you know, as well as I do, when you go to Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or any of those places, Flowers are not cheap, and so I always try to look yard sales or anything like that to where um, look at the flowers and see if it's something that you can repurpose. And this one right here came from Goodwill, and I went ahead and started pulling the flower arrangement apart. And for me, I was going to use actual real real sticks out of my yard, but then I noticed this, which would be less. Um, you know, heavy. And so this is one of the picks. And then the green little berries, you may remember those were in a, a post that I video, actual video that I did from an estate sale. So again, make sure you check out the flowers. Like I said, you may totally hate the arrangement, but the flowers are really good quality and that's what I look for. But Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Walmart, places like that, they have things that you can still create this look. Okay, <clears throat> so what I did is I went ahead and uh, cut this apart, and there was something going on with my clippers on, in this video. I'm not really sure why they were not cutting for me, but I ended up just bending this back and forth and actually got it to, to break. Okay, so here is where I was just kind of um, playing with it to figure out exactly where I wanted it. And that's where it ended up covering that little perch at the bottom there. But that was totally good because, and look at this little blue bird, y'all. I got it at Dollar General for a dollar. So I absolutely loved it. He was going on here. So what I needed to do is I needed a way to uh, wrap these picks together so that they would stay. And so I just took some floral wire and then went ahead and weaved the wire back and forth between these branches and the pick and then brought it back, twisted it in the back, and then brought it back to the front. And then what I decided I was going to do, because this is going to be outside, I mean, like I said, this will not be in the weather. Um, it'll be under a covered porch. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, if you're going to have it, you know, where there's, you know, it might get damp or something like that, I mean, you're definitely going to have to keep, you know, get probably do a little bit more wiring than what I did here just to you know let you know so the all again I just twisted it cut it off and then I took another piece of floral wire once I figured out exactly where I wanted to put it then um, I got another piece of floral wire and I actually wrapped it around and you'll see me do that here. Um, I try to keep the steps in there. Some of them, you know, the video gets a little bit lengthy, but m all of the main parts of the video, I really want you guys to catch. So that way, um, you know, it works out for you as well. So I went ahead and I, you'll see me right there. I actually hot glued the wire to the, uh, the birdhouse and the stems. And then I twisted it around because it's already looped around the perch cut that off and folded that uh, wire back into the branch. And then I took some more um, hot glue and put it on the other side. 
And then I went up to the very top and I wired one of the berry stems to the top perch up there at the top. Just so I know that wind comes along or something like that, it's going to keep, you know, keep its form and everything's going to stay pretty tight. Now, if you were obviously doing this inside, <clears throat> you know, some of these steps you could, you know, delete or um, even the, the, the lace inside the holes. I mean, obviously, if you have them inside, you don't have to do that. But I just know we have a problem here in Tennessee. We have a lot of bees, um, which is a, a good thing. But the bees I'm fine with. I just don't want any wasp nest or anything like that. And we do have dirt daubers. I'm not even sure if you guys know what those are in some of your states. But you may call them something different, but they're just very aggravating. Okay, so I took some of this brown moss and I'm just gonna hot glue it around and I'm gonna create a little home for this little bird. So there was really no way that I could, I, and I looked um, at the bird to try to figure out if there was a way that I could you know, use floral wire and wire him into um, one of the perches, at, you know, the branches at the top. It just wasn't gonna happen. And so, um, and it is made out of like a, ceramic kind of thing so um, it wasn't on the light side but so what I did is I created kind of a pocket with this moss and so you'll notice it um, I continue to add you know it's almost like he's built his little nest and the stuff is kind of like hanging out that was kind of my intention and the bird the pick being in front of the birdhouse was kind of as as if it was given the illusion that that birdhouse was, you know, in a tree. That's kind of where I was going with this. And so I wanted to give him some neighbors. I only have the one bird, but that doesn't mean that there can't be other nests inside these other holes. And so I kind of, you know, made it look as if there was, an, you know, other little nest inside the other two holes. And then I went ahead and added a little bit more so um, on this side so that I could get a really good foundation for our little bird. And then added some more up at the top. Let me know what you guys think about this texture. I, I just love it more than just paint. If I painted this, it would not have been, for me, it would, just, would not have been as pretty as it is, you know, with this texture on it. I just think um, it just makes it a big difference. So let me know what your thoughts are. Okay, so now it's time to add our little bird. <clears throat> and so, excuse my voice, y'all. I am still battling this cough. Like I, everybody I talk to is still like, I've had that, I've had the same cough and it's been a hundred days. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I cannot handle more days of this. Um, been to the doctor, did all the things. It's just, it's just, you know, something I'm just going to have to wait it out and let my body fight it off. So, um, anyway, I apologize for cl keep clearing my throat. Okay, so here's where I added the, a lot of hot glue there. Again, if you want to do some E6000 and hot glue, you can do both of them. Um, I just chose to do this. Again, it's not going to get wet, so I felt like this was going to be enough um, for it. But And it's pretty solid. What I did is I lifted him up a little bit and went ahead and hot glued his the back of his little body to the birdhouse as well. But again, there was just no way really to wire him in. So, um, and you might be able to find a pick at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something like that. I've just not seen any bird picks anywhere. I tried to look for some and I just, I didn't see any, but y'all, how cute is this coming out? Okay, so all in the details. So I had to grab my button bag. I didn't like the little white perches because it felt like it blended into the birdhouse. And so I wanted to give it some, a little bit of character on there. So I went ahead and just found a button that was the size of the front of that little perch and then put my little button on there. Um, and I think it just made a big difference. It made them stand out that much better for me. But thank you guys so much for being on my page. I hope you guys enjoy this. Again, um, just let me know if you need the links for the buttons or if you have any questions on this video at all, just message me and I will try to answer you just as soon as I can. 
Again, thank you for passing it down the road for me, which means share, like, and comment. Let me know what you think about this texture as well. And I will see you guys next time. And let me know if you make this. Um, it's just such a cute little project. And you can also visit me on YouTube. All of my videos are in order over there. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.